I know, I know, Tom again, I know. Due to some circumstances beyond our control, you've got another video with me today. I know, right? On the plus side, I have changed my shirt from the first news video because I had toothpaste at the top here, <laughs> which you may or may not have noticed. I now look like a proper adult. Anyway, here's some wrestling news. A top SmackDown star is injured again. We have the latest on FTR's plans in AEW and a female WWE star comments on competing for a men's title. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So it was confirmed on SmackDown that we won't be walking with Elias for a little while. I don't think even Elias is going to be walking properly for a little while. Uh, it looks as if uh, our boy has a torn pectoral and is going to be out of action for quite some time from SmackDown. They wrote him off of SmackDown uh, with the Jeff Hardy storyline that we've seen uh, play out over the last week or so. It also took him out of uh, the Intercontinental Championship tournament as well. Uh, a torn pectoral muscle uh, was what they talked about on SmackDown, and that actually seems to be the case in real life as well. Um, this is actually the second time in the space of like a year or so that Elias has suffered an injury. It was back in September that he got an ankle injury that took him out for a couple of months he came back and sort of got back into the rhythm in time for Wrestlemania and uh, this particular injury a torn pectoral could possibly take him out for eight months some reports are saying it could it could be a while till this heals properly so we may not see Elias back on our screens uh, until next year and uh, which is which is a shame I just I, I just it just feels like he's he didn't Although he was at WrestleMania and, and, he, and he picked up a, a big match at WrestleMania and, and he was in the Intercontinental title tournament, I never feel like we've really hit the, the full momentum with Elias as a babyface. I think his stuff as a heel is excellent. And, and I think that is proper in his wheelhouse to be a bad guy. And the good guy stuff, it doesn't quite connect for me personally. I'd like to know if you disagree. Uh, but we wish a speedy recovery to Elias. We go hard all day, all night. Not my words, the words of lads. Student lads. We're gonna drink all night, lads, 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 shut up. And the words of the Revival's music back in WWE. Of course, they're not the Revival anymore. They're FTR now. And they were on the Jim Cornette experience having a chat. Jim was very fiery about AEW the other week. So I was surprised to see some AEW affiliated uh, talent on the show, but here we are. Really good chat, actually, uh, that Jim and FTR had. They talked about their plans for uh, the future in AEW, whether or not they are their mainstays with AEW. And they said, we're negotiating still. We have a short term, almost handshake deal because they want to get this thing done talking about the thing between them and the Young Bucks, because it's been talked about for so many years. So we're not under a long-term obligation to anybody. We've been very transparent with them, that we're willing to work with these guys. But there's a very real possibility that it's not going to be pretty, and we're not going to respond well to some of the things that they've said before. So, big kayfabe be there. I can... It's a little, little stench of the old kayfabe in some of these quotes, but uh, it, it, that says everything really that they've not signed a, an official deal with uh, AEW yet, and they're sort of hedging their bets. There's lots of places I'd like to see FTR turn up. I think they'd be a lock-in at NWA Power, like that old school sort of Brain Busters, Anderson and Blanchard style team. They've already had the photo with Anderson and Blanchard doing the four thing, and oh, they'd suit NWA Power, big star. The world's their oyster. They can go as and where. Uh, also on the podcast, uh, they talked about that incident from the WWE Hall of Fame. You know, when the guy attacked Bret Hart and there was the revival, there was Dax Harwood uh, with that beauty of an uppercut. Oh, that video, that video alone put Harwood in any wrestling hall of fame. Uh, they talked about the incident and actually Dax had to go and uh, speak to Vince McMahon and, and see the video with Vince. Uh, so it transpires. Dak said, I had a meeting with Vince uh, about it and I did have to show him the video from multiple angles so he could see that the guy wasn't restrained. So if you're not sure of the video that we're talking about, this is the video where uh, as the guy who's jumped Bret Hart is being dragged away, he's been carried away by several officials, uh, you see Dax Harwood just walk into shot and just this guy's wriggling and he just lamps, Dax just lamps this guy 
and he just goes limp. He's done. And uh, Dax's, uh, Dax's defense is that, well, he wasn't handcuffed or anything like that. And he could have jumped and gone for anybody. So he wanted to step in and stop that from happening. Um, he shows the video, the video to Vince, who says there was no cuffs, no cops, no security, just the boys and a mentally unstable guy whose hands are not being restrained at all. He wasn't mad to begin with. He was just worried, according to Dax, regarding Vince. Once he saw the video, once he saw the guy was not restrained, he was still a threat. And that was the case. He was like, that's completely justified. That's self-defense. You guys had to do what you had to do in the blink of an eye to make sure that no one got hurt so so Vince completely behind uh, Dax giving that guy a little punch up the bracket I think Vince would have probably had a go as well if he'd been there from a literal punch up the bracket to a bit of a psychological punch up the bracket WWE has cancelled uh, its tour of Japan that was scheduled for July uh, there's going to be refunds if they've got if you've got tickets for the show you'll get refunds in the next four weeks or so according to WWE.com uh, this is a shame because at the end of last year there was heavy talk about WWE making inroads into Japan they were they were discussions with other promotions and tie-ins with other promotions they were working on. It really looked like there was going to be like possibly an NXT Japan uh, starting up in this year. Sort of the, the Bushi Road expansion it was something that was trying to keep the keep the E out of, of, of Japan. And now that doesn't seem like that's happening. The Japan tour has been cancelled, at least for now. I don't think this is the end of plans to expand into Japan and other continents. I think obviously the pandemic has just put everything on ice for now. So don't be surprised if this is something that we pick up later in the year. But sadly, no uh, NXT, no WWE or NXT based talent heading to Japan in July. Let's talk about Impact Wrestling that have really found their groove over the last couple of months. Even during the pandemic, they seem to be uh, finding their niche in the wrestling world. And one WWE Hall of Famer thinks that there is about to be big things happening for Impact Wrestling, and that being Booker T. Uh, Impact Wrestling, according to Booker, is perhaps back in the wrestling game real soon. Maybe they're getting ready to make a play. I was thinking, with all the acquisitions out there right now, and the video that they showed about Slammiversary, getting ready to kick off. Uh, the video, of course, he's talking about is the one we talked about on news videos recently that shows uh, some of the guys who were fired from WWE back in April or released from WWE back in April uh, flashing up on the screen for a couple of seconds, like Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson, Eric Young, EC3, Rockstar Spud, and the like, all just popping up there, Mike and Maria Kanellis, uh, suggesting possibly of some kind of hostile takeover of ex-WWE guys as part of Slammiversary. Booker's really into this idea. Uh, he talks about some of the stars that are available, and he says there's a lot of other guys out there that's independent right now, now, contractors that are free agents that are looking to get picked up. Uh, guys like Rusev, Heath Slater, Eric Rowan, Cassius Ono, a lot of big guys out there that we could pick up that could put a lot behind a lot of behinds in the seats. And I'm really thinking right now is the perfect time for impact to pull the trigger to get back in the game. Of course, Booker T has history with Impact, former TNA Legends champion Booker T. Um, and uh, there's certainly a, a historical there's a historical slant that TNA slash Impact Wrestling does tend to like hiring a lot of ex WWE guys and doing stuff with them. So it's not out of the realms of possibility that we could have some kind of big hostile takeover featuring uh, released WWE stars. The future endeavoured, if you will. Copyright Tom Campbell, 2020. I have a feeling somebody might try and take that. And final amour, Charlotte Flair. If you haven't seen NXT TakeOver in your house, uh, we won't spoil that here. Don't stress. But we will talk about uh, some comments Charlotte has made about some of her peers and maybe some plans going forward. So Charlotte spoke to the Daily Star uh, about Bailey and Bailey's current heel character. Charlotte's a big fan. Charlotte said, I think having the opportunity to evolve and being on camera with her real life best friend Sasha Banks and playing off that has really given layers to the character. Charlotte says it's difficult to work with her because they're not quite sure who is really the bad guy in this. But as she says, uh, from a far and as an outsider looking in it's been great to see her take the ball and run with it uh, also she spoke to sports Kida, did charlotte and was asked uh, about well asked not just for comments on tessa blanchard and her run as impact world champion but whether charlotte would consider competing for a men's title in a similar way and charlotte said it's something that i want to pursue 
She goes on to say, if you look at the big picture, when women are succeeding in different organizations all around the world, we are all succeeding and we're all winning from that. For Tessa to hold that accolade, we should support and just be extremely proud as a woman to see her do that because when one's doing well, we're all doing well. I couldn't be more proud and happy for what she is doing for women around the world. But the key part of that, of, that, of that answer is, it's something I want to pursue. Now we know that WWE has a big, Big, big plans and, and big love for Charlotte Flair. Uh, you only have to look at the way that she's been put together and booked across the years to see that, like one of the most decorated women's performers in the history of the company. They're really big fans of the work that she does. I know that a lot of a lot of the stuff she does polarizes people and 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 in some cases rightfully so. But it would have to. It would take a bit of a. It would have to take a bit of a groundswell of change uh, for Charlotte to 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 pursue doing something in the men's division. It's certainly not out of the realms of possibility, you know, for Charlotte to compete for a men's title, for anybody to compete for a men's title. I quite like the idea of uh, and, and and as I know, it will draw a lot of conversation up about intergender wrestling and such, and and not not so much the not not so much whether it should be done ethically but more um whether or not you could you could do it and it be effective and that is a discussion that will happen for a long time personally i'm a big fan i've seen some phenomenal intergender matches and i'd like to see more and see see somebody like a charlotte flair mix it up in the men's division you know what 2020 has been weird stranger things have happened <laughs> maybe i don't know Weirder things have happened <laughs> since the last time you'll see me on the channel for today. I promise. Stay safe. Love you. Bye.